Hello everyone out there. It's time for Wise Guys. We're in session. Let's talk today a little bit about metric units. We'll start with a little bit of an introduction to the concept. The metric system, or SI, is used all around the world. It's based on the decimal system, which means powers of 10. A metric measurement consists of two parts, the prefix and the unit. And an, an example is the kiloliter. Kilo is the prefix, which means a thousand. Liter is the unit, which is the measure of volume. That particular measurement can also be written as K, small k, capital L. We use a capital L rather than a small L so that it doesn't get confused with the number one. Some metric system units include grams, which are used to measure mass, liters, which are used to measure volume, and meters, which are used to measure linear length. Other units that will come up for those of you who are in other disciplines, watts, ohms, joules, and bytes. Now think for a minute about how simple the metric system is with everything being multiplying and divided by 10 and powers of 10 and compare that with what you have to learn to work in the imperial system. The imperial system units, which many of us grew up with, have a number of different types of units, right? In, for mass, we measure in ounces, pounds, and tons. 16 ounces equals one pound, 2,000 pounds equals one ton. There's no sort of uniformity or predictability even among the numbers, the factors that are used to convert units. In volume, we measure cups, pints, quarts, gallons. Eight fluid ounces is a cup, two cups is a pint, two pints is a quart, four quarts is a gallon. Once again, there isn't really any uniformity or pattern among the conversion factors between the different units. Linear length is even better, inches, feet, yard, rod, mile. 12 inches is one foot, three feet is one yard, 16 feet is one rod, 5,280 feet is one mile. So we've got all these different numbers that operate as uh, conversion factors. And it's a fair amount of memory work to learn all of them so that you can use them all. Now consider this in contrast. In the metric system, we've, I've uh, assembled a whole lot of different metric prefixes and their meanings here. A terameter is a trillion meters. So the capital T stands for tera, which means a trillion, and meter is the unit. And it will be written a one followed by three, six, nine, twelve zeros. A gigameter is a billion meters. Giga means billion. And you can see that a billion is a one followed by nine zeros. A megameter is a million meters. Mega means million, and it's one followed by six zeros. These units within the box are the ones that are a little more commonly known, or some of them are. However, for astronomers, they would use some of these um, larger units. For people studying electricity or blood chemistry, various things, they might use the really small units. Okay, so the more common ones, then kilometer, which is a thousand meters, hectometer and decameter, Hectometer means 100, deca means 10. Now these are not as commonly used, but they are part of this system. The meter, which is a unit by itself, one. Deci means one-tenth. A decimeter is a tenth of a meter. Centimeter, or centimeter, is one one-hundredth of a meter, so centi means one one-hundredth. Millimeter is one one-thousandth of a meter, so milli means a thousandth fraction. Micrometer, we're getting into the really tiny, really tiny measurements now, is a millionth of a meter. So that would be six decimal places after the, after the point. Nanometer is a billionth, that would be nine decimal places. Just like giga is a billion, which is followed by nine zeros. A nanometer is a billionth, the fraction, so there are nine decimal places. Picometer is a trillionth, 12 decimal places. But you can see how these all relate to each other in a predictable way. They're all powers of 10. You move the decimal one way or the other to convert from one unit to another. Here's another <coughs> excuse me, way of giving the same information. Okay? If you use a scale such as this, 
tera, giga, mega, kilo, and then hecto and deca come in between the kilo and the unit. Deci, centi, milli is one one thousandth, micro, nano, pico. So between each of these, there is a factor of a thousand. Okay? Between kilo and the unit, we break it down further into hecto and deca. And between the unit and milli, which is a thousandth, we break it down to tenths and hundredths. But between milli and micro is one jump. Between micro and nano is one jump of a thousand. Okay? As you change units, is for example, if you wanted to change millimeters to centimeters, you would use this scale and move the decimal according to its position on the scale. If you're converting from millimeters to centimeters, you'll move the decimal one place and you'll move it to the left. If you're moving from the unit meters to decimeters, for example, that's one step and it's to the right. So you'd move your decimal one place to the right. We'll practice this. Okay. When you're converting to a larger unit then, you'll have a smaller number of measurements of, of items. So what you need to do is divide, move the decimal to the left. So if you're, if you're converting from decigrams, say, to hectograms, if you're converting from a small unit, a decigram is small, to hecto, which means 100, you're converting to a much larger unit, you move the decimal to the left, you're going to have a much smaller number. The, by the same token, if you're converting from kilo to the unit, kilograms to grams, you're starting with a larger unit and you're converting to a much smaller unit. So in this case, you convert to a smaller unit, you multiply. And that involves moving the decimal to the right, or moving the decimal to the right. Okay. Let's practice with some of these. For example, 45 grams, the unit is here. We want to convert to kilograms. That means that we move the decimal one, two, three places to the left. So assuming that it's here to begin with, right, if it's not showing, you can assume it's there. We need to move it three places to the left. So one, two, and it will be now here. Okay, so 45.0 grams is 0 0.045 kilograms. The only thing you have to do to convert from grams to kilograms is move the decimal. And this scale shows you how many places to move it. You move the decimal one place for each step on the scale, and you follow the direction that you're moving. 4.894 liters, we're beginning with units again. We want to convert to milliliters, which are much, much smaller. It's actually one one thousandth of, of a liter. Beginning here and moving one, two, three steps to the right. Four, eight, nine, four. It started here. One, two, three steps. It'll be there. We'll have a much bigger number of milliliters because it's a much smaller unit. Okay. 455 centimeters, we're beginning here. We want to convert to meters. So 455, the decimal begins in that position. If it's not showing, we can always assume that it's there. We're moving from centimeters to meters, which means we're moving two steps to the left. So the decimal starts here and we move one, two steps, 4.55 meters. Okay, once you get the hang of this, it's really easy. It's a good idea to memorize this particular scale. And once you have it fixed in your mind, and you have the idea of moving the decimal right and left, this is going to become much easier for you. Okay, if you need review on decimals, it would be a good idea to check our our video on decimals and on using decimals. Also remember that you can pause, you can rewind this video if you want to review anything that's said. Just for your interest, the metric system is so well integrated that you can work between different types of units efficiently. For example, one centimeter cubed is equal to one milliliter. 
okay, which is you're converting a linear unit to a volume unit. And it's seamless. It's an exact equivalency. It translates into other conversions. One liter is exactly equal to 1,000 centimeters cubed or 1,000 milliliters. Okay, the same is true with kilograms and ton tons. 1,000 kilograms is equal to one metric ton. 1,000 kilograms is equal to one Here are some to try on your own. Pause your computer and try them. After you're finished, hit play and check your answers. Then you can check out the trivia at the end of this video. Okay, ready. 16 meters is how many kilometers? Let's review. We want to go from meters to kilometers, which means we have to move the decimal point three places to the left. So here we go. It starts here. Three places to the left. Point zero one six kilometers. Kilograms to grams. We're starting with kilo and we're moving to the unit, which means we need to move the decimal. One, two, three places. This time it's to the right. We're moving from a large unit to a smaller unit, the number that we're going to have is going to be much bigger. We need to move the decimal three places to the right. So 270 kilograms is 270,000 grams. In the next example, we're converting liters to milliliters. Liters to milliliters means we will be moving the decimal one, two, three places to the right because we're moving from a larger unit to a smaller unit, we move the decimal to the right. It began here. We'll move it three places. Meters to centimeters. Meters to centimeters. It means we move the decimal one, two places to the right. Okay. It'll be 3,907 centimeters. This time we're going from kilograms to centigrams. Kilo to centi. One, two, three, four, five steps to the right. One, two, three, four, five. 455. Those are five places. 455 centigrams. And finally, 46.8 centimeters to millimeters. We're starting at centi and we're going to milli, which means we'll move the decimal one place to the right. Once to the right, 468 millimeters. Okay. Well done, crew. As promised, here is some interesting trivia. The diameter of nuclear particles, for those of you that are interested in nuclear science, 10 to the minus 15 meters, which means 15 decimal places after the decimal. Okay, we're talking a very, very small fraction. Diameter of atoms, 10 to the minus 9. Remember, minus 9 would be billions, billionths, the fraction billions. The diameter of red blood corpuscle is 10 to the minus 5. Five decimal places following the decimal point, which is what, 100 thousandths. The length of Lake Erie can also be measured in meters, 10 to the 5 meters. A 1 followed by 5 zeros. The radius of the Earth, a 1 followed by 7 zeros, which would be 10 millions. The radius of Earth's orbit around the Sun, we're now getting into larger numbers, 1 followed by 11 zeros, meters. And into the really huge numbers, distance of the first star beyond the sun is 10 to the 16 meters. The interesting thing is all this is measured in meters, and it's all powers of 10, right? The diameter of the Milky Way is 10 to the 21 meters. Distance to the furthest photographed galaxy, which is mind-boggling when you think of it, 10 to the 25 meters away. Okay, have fun. Good luck with your work. 
on metric conversions. Remember that you can replay this anytime you're interested if you want to review. And the related concepts you might want to review are decimals and powers, radicals. Okay, that's it for today, folks. It's been a presentation of the wise guys. Have fun working with metric conversions.